Welcome back, friends, to Reverb Music Festival 2024, day two. Today, I'm sitting with Dion and Christian from Amberlin. Hello. Dude, you guys don't smell that horrible considering you just came off the stage. You know what? We were able to do laundry like two days ago, so usually this, sm <laughs> this shirt yeah. smells like death. Yeah, we're only like two shows in on our, uh, show, on our clothes. show clothes. So. You guys put a lot of energy into that performance. Yeah, dude, I, um, I think we learned a long time ago that most people listen with their eyes, so yeah. they can't tell the difference between my instrument and Dion's, truly, you know? Sure. So we just wanna, we grew up going to hardcore shows and punk shows and watching people just rock out, so I think it's just in our nature. What have you learned so that way your backs don't kill you after a performance? Because you're jumping and throwing guitars around a lot. I would think that would really hurt. <laughs> uh, a lot of like proper stretching. Or you, like, it, it's literally a trial by fire because when you're younger, you don't really think about stretching and everything. And then you start getting like on the other side of 20, like 25, 26, 27, and you're like, you're like, oh, things are starting to hurt. And then you have to go start going to see like massage therapists on your day off to, to fix a <laughs> shoulder or something because you wrecked sure. yourself. And uh, so we, we just kind of pick up stretches. And then um, uh, our other guitarist, Joey, his uh, fiance is a doctor of physical therapy. So that's been a huge help because she shows us like proper like therapeutic stretching and everything yeah so it, that that's pretty awesome i'm it's it saves me a lot of pain but yes i'm still in pain all that yeah all that being <laughs> said it's still like we're in our 40s so there it's not without sacrifice for yeah. sure yeah, yeah. so these how, actions we have suffer. consequences we suffer for the art <laughs> <laughs> for sure it's I'm also hard not to I mean, we, we really do enjoy what we do, so it's really hard not to get into, uh, it. Get into it and yeah. and perform the way we do because we believe in what we're doing and we enjoy it, you yeah. know? Well, I think you can see it in the crowd, obviously, when you guys have the energy and bring the energy that you do. How has music, because obviously you have to like take care of your body more after 20 years, but how has music changed from 20 years ago to now? Because you guys have a new singer that's on the tour with you, but in general, like you mature, and so your music has to reflect that a little bit, right? I think the biggest thing has been the way people consume music has changed the way people release music. Okay. In a lot of ways, you know, you're you're having to hit social media, you're having to drop songs on Fridays instead of uh, it was two. It was always Tuesday for years was release day. Okay. So now it's like on Friday. So you're trying to hit people right as they're going to the weekend. So you can like maximize streams on Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever you know, your streaming sources and it's just trying to stay on top of the short attention span of, you know, everything that's just constantly coming out. And, um, you know, you kind of ha almost have to like inundate people and, you know, in a weird way, inundate yourself with a, this crazy release schedule and then day to day promotion of what you've just released. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's a, a very fast evolving thing who in the yeah. band, has the best uh, knowledge and understanding of all the socials and new marketing strategies. Uh, we're lucky to have a great management team that, that has it all kind of bundled in and um, has the vision for like, for example, on this tour, we have a media person out. We learned, like you said, the business has changed so much that you, you're not just playing for the audience that they, that is there that day. You're you're literally able to promote that show to everyone on the planet through social media, right? By releasing videos and you know re like these great edit kind of short thirty second things and photos. So it's like you just get a team that has like the better knowledge than you do, right? Because sure. it's like we can't as much as we want to be involved. We are like we touch everything, obviously, but we want to hire people that know more than we do in those things. That's just how businesses run, right? It's like, right. we're really good at writing songs and recording music and playing shows. And it's like, we could also do that side of it, but it would just be, it would, you would get, you'd get spread too thin. You only have so much bandwidth. So yeah, at a certain point, the, uh, you know, when we started, it was, we were very DIY, you know, we were handling everything. I was tour managing, you know, Steven was handling, um, like communications with the label and interviewing and interviews and like Nate was doing art direction Joey was writing all the songs so we were very much like a you know compartmentalized unit but then as you get bigger 
and other things come into play, if you try to focus on everything, something's gonna fall through the cracks. So that's, that's kind of the point where you go, okay, this person knows more than me, like bring them in and have them handle radio, have this person handle social media, have this person handle marketing, you know, like it, it I think, I think being aware of where your strengths and weaknesses are is a huge part of being a band. And we've seen bands over the years that try to do everything DIY and it's almost to their detriment sometimes because it's like, you can't focus on everything and still write good songs and you know not enough hours yeah there's not enough hours no there's a a pie and whatever and you know what i mean however much you put into one thing takes away from another area of that you really can't do all of it i try to juggle everything myself too i'm a a single dad of two kids Uh and then i paint murals and then i do this radio show and up until recently i had a skateboard shop for the last 10 years like trying to juggle everything and give each compartment as much time and energy as it really deserved yeah it's kind of impossible i think um touching on that you're always learning stuff and at the beginning you have to you're like forced to learn how to do everything right what is something recently that each of you have learned either in life or in business that's been helpful i'll I'll use this band as an example so we broke up for five years in 2014 and it was just you know us getting older starting starting families having kids and just like we'd been doing it for so long that some guys were just like it was hard for those things to occupy the same space right yeah so we reformed in 2019 under the kind of premise of like let's just do things when we want to do them on our own terms and the kind of part time and i think what i've learned since 2019 has been like you can't it can't be a one foot in thing it's got to kind of be two feet in like it, and that doesn't mean we have to tour like we used to tour which was like 10 months out of the year no one wants to do that you know i've got a 10 month old at home right now and we've been on tour this tour will be three months long so it's like i've been gone for a quarter of his life you know yeah. by the time i see him again and i but what i learned was we need everyone's focus and attention on this thing and because we were doing other jobs and trying to like fit this in and like trying to coordinate schedules and ultimately that's kind of what led to uh, this new formation of like Steven stepping back because he just was unable to truly commit much time to it and it's like you have to it, well, otherwise the business it's like if you own your skate shop but you're right. only open on Wednesdays from nine to right. noon and you're like I don't know why my shop's not Sure. doing well right it's like yeah. well because you know so i think that's something i learned was like no it's gotta we ha- all have to be completely focused on this thing quit your jobs let's let's take the leap and truly try and give it another shot you know sure. yeah I, I, and i think a lot of a lot of what made us realize that is we got to a point where we were turning down more opportunities than we were accepting and it, it you know and we kind of got to the point where like well if there's that much interest and what we're doing, it's something worth putting effort into. 100%. Sure. Right? And that, that was a huge shift for us because when we first came back after our hiatus, um, we thought it was going to be purely at our leisure. And that quickly was not the case. You know, and you, when you, it's like I said, you got, we started, you know, just getting offers and we're like, I mean, this would be rad, but not everybody can do it you know like yeah. and then so that we had we had a hard discussion and it was actually steven's idea for us to mm-hmm. bring in somebody for him that would allow us to say yes more than no at uh you know just standing there looking at all these offers uh for touring or right. whatever and you know it, it changed the dynamic entirely and it's been something we're having to feel but it's it feels very good right now very natural we um, Maddie is an incredible person and he and Steven have had a relationship for a few years as just friends in the music industry and um, it's really helped us to kind of turn a corner mm-hmm. uh, on what we're doing and we wouldn't even be on this tour right now if it wasn't for Maddie. Yeah. So and it's, it is still at our leisure but it's it is a thing like you said it's like hard to be a husband a father work a job also be in this band like there's just too many things on the plate it's like you got to either shift some things off your plate or you know it's like you have to start making some tough decisions right and i think steven made that decision was like i need to get the band off my plate right now for a time you know so and the rest of us were like well we're making the band our steak or whatever you know yeah well i mean you guys crushed on stage and maddie brought a ton of energy but that does bring into the question of well you can't have 
both feed in if you're multi- like juggling more than one band too, right? So like, how do you juggle the responsibilities when you're singer, at least at the moment, I know you're still doing stuff, mm-hmm. um, but like, how, how do you juggle that when he has to do that, but then also with your band and still reach the goals that you want? We just, it's, it's a scheduling thing at that point. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, we, we, our manager is constantly in touch with his manager. So anything that may arise, they make sure that he can do it and it's it's really not all that different from even just uh making sure that the rest of us can do it you right. know like hey like i mean a, a recent example was a we had we got like a holiday radio show offer in december okay five days before christmas which is kind of like Sacred, down to the wire time. you know right. it's like yeah. usually that's the time when everybody wants to be home with their families and everything so our manager just reached out and said hey guys the offer came in it's december 20th do you want to do it or do you not want to do it is everybody free and that's kind of what we do that's kind of the same approach with maddie and um he he grew up listening to us because he, he's younger than us. I mean, we have a picture of him, sophomore picture yearbook, wearing an Amberlynn shirt. Sick. He, <laughs> he told yeah. his wife cool. that he loved her when they were dating after outs- an Amberlynn show. Outside an Amberlynn show. Yeah. So it's it's really weird that we, and we didn't know this going into it, but we sure. are a big part of his story just in his life. And he told us uh, straight up that he would not be There's doing no other this. band. If, if any other band everyone. asked you, you'd be like, no, there's yeah. no way. But, and also his personality is like, it's fascinating because on this tour at one point we were just, everyone was hanging out and someone asked like, what's a, you know, if someone was to ask you, what's a weird hobby you had? Like, you know, for mine, it was like, I play Warhammer, which is like this, yeah. like the desktop, little figurines yeah, and stuff, and like, yeah. you know, just things you paint and like, you know, he was like, honestly, he's like, he knew at a young age what he wanted to do and he had like a laser sighted vision so he's like he's like anything outside of music was a waste of time to me so he literally like is constantly working always working like so he's able to to manage and navigate those two bands because he he wakes up early deals with it's Memphis literally stuff. all he wants to do yeah sure. he deals with the Berlin stuff when he's home he hates being home but when he's home he's got his own studio in his house he's constantly just like he wants to be working you know and his wife is works for herself and is able to travel with him and come out and like they've just got this good rhythm and yeah. he's just a driven dude that has just positioned himself into a place of like the, I know, he knows where he wants to go and yeah I'm sure he thought about it like how, can I actually do this but we're not that you know we're not trying to tour a ton right. this is way more this tour is proof was a vehicle concept. was a vehicle for us this year to kind of like sh- proof of concept with 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 Maddie but nor n- going forward we will not be doing three month long yeah tours. just not sustainable yeah, yeah but you guys are putting out new music yeah right because yeah, yeah. I saw Spotify just told me like yesterday or whatever yeah we just dropped out, right? a record uh, August 2nd yeah uh, so new, almost two weeks single, ago now yeah and you know we've got a bunch of new songs in the clip so we're just getting started to be honest how has that music changed like with this album what what is new about the music on this one versus previous I mean, this album was, so we got to go back. So 2019, we reformed. We didn't really have an intention to write new music at that point. We were just kind of like, we thought we tied things up pretty well in 2014. When we reformed, we were just kind of like, it'd be fun to play shows again. We missed each other. You know, people were living in different states. And um, when COVID hit, we found ourselves with a lot of free time, right? And I think that's when we really were like, let's maybe try and start writing some new songs. So we recorded an EP worth of music ourselves and then kind of shopped it around, found a, found a label and kind of got the, um, you know, release schedule of uh, this slow drip is a, is a new concept because the culture now is so ADD that like, if you just drop 10 songs, people consume it and then just move on to the next thing, right? Yeah. Like it could be a month long thing, but if you go, I'm gonna release a couple singles and I'm gonna release an EP, and then a year later, a couple singles, an EP, and then a year later, a couple new singles, and then combine all that stuff together. So the new record is those two EPs plus a couple new songs, but we, we knew that was gonna be the plan from the beginning. And uh, it just allowed us to be able to have something to talk about, especially because we weren't touring. You know, yeah. that was the hardest thing was like, this just allowed us to stay on people's radars. So the new record was basically a culmination of four years of songs plus two songs we basically finished last year. 
Um, and moving forward, I don't really know what the game plan is. Maybe we just will release singles, and I, we're still figuring it out. We're writing the script as we go. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's it's weird. Like I said, you know, we we were out of the game for. I mean, the last album we released was 2014. So, I mean, almost 10 years. Yeah. Not, you know, barring the fact that we released a couple EPs, EPs yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's been but 10 years since we so released So seeing how people, again, like I was saying, seeing how people consume stuff, it, w- it was very interesting. Um, just because, you know, like, it's like one single drop an album was what it was back in the day. You know what I mean? Like you have your lead single, you drop the album, then you have like a follow up single and blah, blah, blah. And now, like Chris was saying, like the slow drip, like people are releasing like five singles before the album finally hits. And it's just, it's all about just, you know, driving interest in streams going into a release. And we saw that even with the songs that were released on the two EPs going back to uh, 2022, um, the first EP dropped and then the second EP dropped last year. And when we released it all as an album with the two new songs that Maddie sang on, the streams for the previous ten songs jumped like crazy. Yeah. So it's it's gonna be a thing of kind of figuring out what and how to do this and I don't think anybody can really tell you the yeah, the right every, way to do anything. Every we, artist is we, trying to figure had, it out. It's we, the Wild West. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. And also I mean just our experience going back to being on major labels and everything and indie labels back in the day like what we came out of that thinking is that nobody knows what the hell they're doing right they they they've got experience they've been in the industry for years but they can't tell you for certain what's going to work and what's not going to work right. we we had we had an A&R tell us that like oh this isn't going to work that's never worked and then we had feel good drag be our biggest single of all time like as a as a re re release single yeah it's like oh that's just gonna that's when's gonna figure out but this one's gonna be the big one you guys need to record a cover song to really pump this album up and then then feel good drag went number one on alternative radio yeah. it's like and you kind of like in your head you're just like middle finger to you dude but you know then out loud you say hey that was great cool yeah. you know but it's just like i mean nobody knows right? and, and also technology is changing so quickly that like a lot of these platforms did not exist you know and then their new platforms yeah. come up like tiktok people will get tiktok famous immediately you'll have like bands artists will have songs go viral on tiktok and then they're, they're no one and then all of a sudden they're like an in high demand and it's just like it's crazy i don't know and then they can't I write a follow-up song and they just know, go away well not that, that they don't even know works. how to perform yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of these yeah. people I mean, that never and it's, have performed and it's nothing and new go, i mean right, yeah. the one hit wonder is sure. the age-old story of the music industry right? right and tiktok just and social media in general just gives you a new version of the one hit wonder and that's it you know because like you get you these like people that they write a song in their bedroom they've never played a show before and that song blows up and they're not prepared for it. They don't even have a band, you know, some, and God bless them. A lot of them are very talented. They can play all the instruments and they, they know how to record, to do like home recordings with like Pro Tools or Logic or whatever. But you have to, I, I still stick by the 10,000 hours thing. You know, the, the Beatles, the Beatles, it, the, you know, the theory is the Beatles played it together for 10,000 hours before they were the Beatles. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and still to really this day, holding, when, holding in the skill and yeah. like the uh, cohesion as performing artists and, and like learning, how, learning to how to perform yeah. and learning how to write songs. And, and I'm not like knocking anyone that gets famous on TikTok. I'm not Absolutely gonna, not. I'm never going to talk down to anyone that gets famous in any way. I want to, I want to celebrate that person because you know everyone everyone's trying their best and i'm yeah. you know what however that took shape then great you know god bless you we just grew up in a different well, in the early I still to this 90s day. you none of these things existed our the our only platform was playing shows you right. know at that point still to this day if if you know we are talking to fans after a show or before a show whatever they say what what advice do you have for somebody starting a new band i always say practice a ton and play as many shows as you can because that is like that and that's not that's not to say like i'm saying like 
that's how you're going to get your name out there or anything. That that's what's going to make you good at your craft. Right. So you you utilize TikTok, utilize Instagram, utilize Facebook, do all that, but hone your craft. Right. Because if what you're doing is good and you believe in it and people pick up on that and they want to see more of it and you, you know, for some reason do become the next like big sensation on social media or whatever and that gets you signed whatever you have to deliver there's a you know I, what i mean yeah, like i mean i can i could play like someone I mean, even we're playing a festival tonight reverb festival with longtime friends of our story of the year and adam russell bass player asked me one time he's like he's like when you're playing you just have your eyes closed are you just like guessing what you're doing i was just like He's like, cause I, he's like, I, I kind of like straddle that line of having to look, and I, I was like, I was like, in all honesty, I've just, I've just been playing since I was so young, and I read, a, I read an article in Bass Player Magazine long, long, long time ago. Les Claypool from Primus said that he would practice his instrument in front of a TV until the point where he was no longer po- paying attention to what he was playing, and he was only watching TV, and if you. I mean, yeah. Primus is a throwback, obviously, <laughs> for a lot sure. of people. But it, you know, it's yeah. it, you know, he he. His point was, I honed what I was doing so that I didn't have to, th- so that I could just play my songs for people. Yeah, there's and a. It's it's a thing where it's you you want to hone your craft and you want to do. There's things, a quote. So. I might misquote it, but it's like success is when uh, preparation meets opportunity, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like you you prepare yourself for that time when it's like you put the work in, and truly just. It's why we practice before tours. We've played these. We've yeah. played some of these songs for twenty Ten plus thousand years. Thousand times. We yeah. played them. Yeah. But we'll still thousands. get together for multiple days before a tour and like and practice and the songs practice the songs because as you want to rise to the moment and, and just keep just stay frosty. Ev- everything on tour is not practical. There's days like today where it's a festival. We don't get a sound check. We are literally, our, our crew is throwing our gear up there, yeah, plugging go. in, and our front of house guy is making sure that there's a signal from every instrument on stage, and then we go, all right, but we know, one minute to show. But we know we're we coming in prepared, yeah. and everything's dialed in. We have everything dialed in, so we, we're not really concerned, right? Sure. When was the last time you were concerned that something went wrong that you weren't prepared for? Because that inevitably on this will tour. happen. Chicago on this tour. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Um, we had, was, there were just some bad technical difficulties with uh, the, the venue we were playing, and we started our set, what, 35 minutes late? We um, only, yeah, we only got, we got to, play to play a couple four songs. songs. Like, our, our whole rig went down. And like, like we were playing at one point and like we just all of a sudden didn't hear maddie singing unfortunately and like, like then we, and then from there it's like there was no more bass there we was used no more to play guitar. An- analog <laughs> amps where you just plug in right like yeah. that's it but now we're like running off like digital amps and everything's running through a laptop and like all our click tracks and everything is going through a playback rig and that playback rig went down it and controls we actually our monitors, have two computers like, so there's a redundancy we haven't even had one computer go down and both computers went down and just like it was so we insane. lost all we couldn't hear like when when the computer goes down that's controlling your monitors you hear nothing yeah it was crazy. so it, you it know was, like we're basically running a digital uh, a digital monitor board and i mean it just it honestly is that debatable point, the, I, the the worst show we've had like it was like our yeah. our tech was like i'm gonna kill myself <laughs> Yeah, it, but it was happened, rough. That happened yeah. with Secondhand Serenade today. I yeah. know it. I know it. I saw <laughs> it happen. I have some Someone PTSD like, play- from Chicago. <laughs> that was they rough. Like, their playback rig went down, and they just had to play acoustic, sure. like fully acoustic. I know they're already acoustic. But. Yeah, it, it, and it sucks also because we had already gone on stage so late because there were issues with the house uh, the house audio stuff yeah. before we went on stage. So there was, like, there was no time to solve any problems. Sure. And, um, I mean, at one point, this ungodly sound came through the monitors and the front of house and I, I watched the crowd go I heard it like cover their ears and go oh yeah, like it, it was, was yeah it was it was great. painful like it almost deafened us on stage it We're was getting anxiety right now even thinking about yeah, it yeah right, let's, let's move on next <laughs> question yeah, dude All no right. that, that, that had happened <laughs> yesterday okay so over this time frame uh, thing you have so many epic moments happen that I think you get desensitized mm-hmm. where things are no longer really exciting when they should be and mm-hmm. I try to remind myself often when I'm in a certain situation of like holy shit
this is pretty like iconic that I'm mm -hmm. having this moment and anybody else I know would be so stoked this would be a life memory so I need yeah. to like enjoy it what was the last thing that happened to each of you that you genuinely were like really excited about you know to fur further what you're talking about it's like you know how do you stay grounded when you're when you're constantly living this you know how do you not lose yourself and just have this like this this um entitlement right because you've just been, been in a band for so long you almost forget where you came from you know because back in the day when we started i can remember when i first started playing guitar being like oh man I, if only i could play this local venue that's like 200 cap you know i'd go to those shows i'm like that would be so sick and it's like it grows right and you play that venue and you go man if only i could play you know deviate in seattle or this you know and it gr keeps growing and i think we've always stayed grounded because we remind ourselves where we came from and and you know covid those years we broke up everyone went and worked normal jobs like for the first time as adults like i've worked my whole life part-time right until i was in a band then i was in a band for a long period of time and then finally had to get a full-time job and i i was fine with that but it, it's not the it's not this right and right. it's like it keeps you i've done enough to to keep me reminded of how special this is and and you know it's a rare thing where people can do the thing they love and have that be also their job and i've never lost sight of that and none of and we'll never allow any anybody in our band to get big heads or start being rock stars or any of that no. kind of stuff it's like there's so many times i'll go out in the crowd and I'll, and I'll talk i'll just be watching from front of house and someone will come up and be like i don't want to bother you i'm like you're not bothering me i'm just a dude you know what yeah. i mean like you might think i'm like this very special person and i i've worked very hard to get where i'm at but i'm still just a dude you know what i mean like right. i just happen to be in a band as well and so i don't know like we you know i worked construction through covid because my boss let me kind of just be on a long leash I, like i could come and go because he was like oh you're in a band that's so sick right yeah. and i'd be like i gotta go do this live stream with amber lynn so i i, I, can't, I can't be there for this job and i could just come yeah. and go as i please yeah but i mean that's very humbling some of the stuff i've done because it's like in my mind i go man i've been on late night TV, sure. you know, and I'm here like, you know, painting the CVS through the night in Miami, you know, right. and, yeah. and anyone else would look at me and just be like, that guy looks like he's on work release working for this construction company. Right. Right. So it's like when we get to do what we actually love to do, it's like, there's nothing else I want to do, you know? And I, I would say even just, you know, tying it into what we just did tonight. Um, we, you know, we just two weeks ago released a new song and when we were playing that song, I saw a lot of people out there singing that new song. And that made me incredibly grateful because we've been a band for 22 years at this point. And the fact that people still care about new music that we're putting out makes me incredibly grateful because I've said it before and people are like, ah, whatever. But I'm like, I never thought we got would get the chance to make a second album, sure. let alone eight albums. Yeah. So. Nine when when we got to make our second album i was like like oh the label this. actually wants us to put out more music this is awesome and then the third album and the fourth album, you know and it's like it was just it and you don't have can you don't really have control over that as an artist because you're basically just lucky that people like what you do 100 percent. you're lucky that people like what you think is the art good. you create yeah, right? yeah. so you know, to be here 22 years later and a song that we would legitimately put out 22 years later, people were singing to was a very special moment and has been for the past two weeks. The fact that people have yeah. latched on the song, have appreciated it and liked it and thought it was good. And um, it's moments like that always that I, you know, that just remind you that remind me of why I do this and it makes me happy. And, you know, I. I, I'm, I don't take it for granted because um, there's a fly know, right? just just hanging out. You, hey, buddy, you want you want to answer a question? Where yeah. are you? <laughs> um, he was landing on the mic, so you know. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it's just a, a thing of you know. It, it it does make you feel grateful, and yeah. you know, those those moments are when when we came back in 2019. I I promised myself that I would live in the moment more than I did in the past because we stopped touring in 2014 and thought it was done 
I thought when I went home from that final tour that Andrew that part of your would life never play a yeah. show again because we were in that place as human beings. So when we came back, I promised myself that I was going to just you know look out every night at some point and just take it in yeah. and appreciate what was there. Yeah. And not that I didn't do that before, but I just don't think I appreciate it on the same level as we do now, you know? So, I mean, if you saw us play tonight, you saw us with big fucking smiles on our faces because we appreciate and love what we do. And we For take sure. it every moment. I, yeah. I study philosophy and there's there in philosophy, there's an a idea of uh, last time meditations. And it's basically thinking it's like you meditate on something and going that might be the last time you do it and it's like it's you thinking towards the future going and it keeps you in the present going appreciating it while you have it because there are like there is a shelf life to everything in life right you're we're all going to die right you almost have to meditate about dying you know we don't think about it but it's an eventuality and i think that's what he's saying is like we already lost it one time mm -hmm. and to get it back just keeps us so appreciative and that's what to we find out that people still cared too yeah. was like a big thing for us because we when we came back and we were playing shows there were people telling us they didn't discover our band until after, after we broke up yeah sure or they never got to see us or yeah. whatever like it was it's just been yeah it's just very humbling and just gives us so much gratitude honestly 100 percent. why i'm i have so much gratitude for you too and this whole experience, this has been really cool. Not just you guys sitting with yeah. me, because this was dope, but just this whole music <laughs> festival and getting to see all these bands. I'm excited to go see Yellow Card and everybody else perform. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.